Black holes are one of the most mysterious and tumultuous cosmic entities. Sucking in everything around them, even light, these monstrosities harness enough power to warp even gravity. Even more fascinating is that the energy supplied by black holes is practically boundless. Because they suck everything in as fuel, and space has no shortage of food, black holes have incredibly long life spans. To get specific, a black hole with the mass of our Sun would likely survive 1067 years. However, the supermassive black holes at the center of our galaxy and most are far larger than this. Therefore, it has to be asked, is there a way to harness this renewable energy? Absolutely. At least, in the distant future. Here's how. As a massive star collapses in on itself, its core is compressed until it becomes a black hole. Since angular momentum cannot go away, the spinning star picks up speed as it shrinks, and eventually collapses into a tiny, yet incredibly fast spinning black hole. Once this occurs, the space directly around the new black hole is warped by the power of the new entity. This region is known as an ergosphere. Light and other matter gets sucked into a black hole and cannot come back out. However, light and matter in the ergosphere could conceivably re-emerge, though it would be greatly changed by the intense force. This ergosphere contains converted kinetic energy from the black hole, so much, in fact, that you would need to move faster than the speed of light to stand still in this region. The ergosphere contains more than enough kinetic energy for the needs of humanity, but how can we tap into it? The Penrose process this concept, designed by Roger Penrose in 1969, realizes the fact that a process of energy transfer could occur in the ergosphere. He understood that you may need to move at light speed to stand still in the ergosphere, but you don't need to be moving that fast to enter it. Imagine, if you will, that you slip into a whirlpool and instead of just floating along for the ride, you start paddling in the direction water is flowing. Your speed would dramatically increase to a point far faster than you could swim normally. Now, in this situation, you would simply fall into the center of the whirlpool eventually, as you would in a black hole. However, if you could leave something behind, you may be able to escape. In theory, a rocket fired into the ergosphere could separate into two halves by firing rockets. One half would fall into the black hole, but the other could launch out of the ergosphere far faster than it entered. Does the concept sound familiar? If you've seen the movie Interstellar, that's why. Note, if you haven't seen that movie, I would highly recommend it. Most of the concepts regarding space and the mind-bending occurrences are actually fairly grounded in physics. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Without spoilers, in the movie, the crew of the spaceship realizes they don't have enough fuel to reach a destination. Given their proximity to a supermassive black hole, they decide to use its momentum to propel their ship. After circling the ergosphere, they detach parts of the ship and use rockets to escape the pull of the black hole. This provides the ship with enough energy to make it to their destination. Experts came out after the movie's release to mention that this was a perfect execution of the Penrose process. While the execution is great with a rocket, it's quite difficult to capture rotational energy in a way that could be used here on Earth. However, there is a certain execution of the Penrose process that could make it possible. Not unlike a Dyson sphere, though far easier to build, what is essentially a giant mirror could be built around a black hole. Yes, you read that correctly, stay with me. Fortunately, the object would only have to be 10 centimeters thick to work and wouldn't actually require a large number of raw materials, really only a few large asteroids. Once this structure is in place around the black hole, we would need to open a section and shoot electromagnetic waves inside. After closing the opening, those waves would bounce around faster and faster. Some may get lost in the event horizon, but most would stay in the ergosphere. This leads to a process known as superradiant scattering, which is basically when similar waves interact coherently and become exponentially stronger. By opening another panel of this massive mirror system, the exponentially stronger electromagnetic waves could be absorbed and converted into massive amounts of energy. So, we have incredible sources of energy that last far longer than we could ever need and a couple of different ways to harness it. Here's the beautiful thing, this isn't science fiction. The Penrose process and superradiant scattering are both very much grounded in physics. I'm not saying we need to travel to the center of the Milky Way to harness this energy. 
That being said, in a distant future, harnessing our galaxy's supermassive black hole may be our only option. I think it is far likelier, though, that we will discover a way to control smaller black holes, perhaps a better phrasing is, strategically place. Combined with the possibility of controlling a theoretical Einstein-Rosen bridge, black holes could be traveled to or placed in certain areas of the universe. These methods could be performed and then the resulting energy could be transferred back to Earth. It may be in the distant future, but the concepts exist in reality today. What are your thoughts on the future of energy? Do you think it resides in space or do you think it is something undiscovered closer to home? Let me know your thoughts below. Stay safe and healthy.